This is Real News Media TV, coverage you can trust. Please like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates. Good afternoon, my Real News Media TV family. Thanks so much for tuning in for another news update for November 26, 2022. And in the news this afternoon, police seek help identifying body dumped in Kingston Harbor. The police are probing the death of a man who they believe was killed and his body dumped in the Kingston Harbor on Friday. His identity has not yet been ascertained. The body was removed from the water by the Marine Police. It had lacerations to the forehead and a swelling to the right side of the face. According to the police, the man appears to be in his 40s and about 5 feet 8 inches tall. He was wearing red sweatpants, black underpants, a yellow sleeveless shirt, and a pair of white sneakers. The police are seeking the public's help to identify the body. They are urging those who can assist the investigation to call the Hunts Bay Police at the 923-7111. Policemen arrested following fatal shooting of two men. Two men were fatally shot by a policeman at a party in Frankfield, Clarendon this morning. The constable is in custody. The deceased have been identified as cousins Jerome Smith and Clayton Pink, both of James Hill in Frankfield. The Clarendon police confirmed that the three men were at the Frankfield town car park at a party when an altercation developed between the policeman and Clayton Pink. It's alleged that Mr. Pink flung a bottle which hit the constable in the face. The policeman reportedly pulled his firearm and shot Mr. Pink. Jerome Smith, who was in the vicinity, was also hit. Pink and Smith were pronounced dead at hospital. Fifty new garbage trucks to be deployed next week. The fifty new garbage trucks recently acquired by the government will be deployed next week. The trucks represent half of the number the government is procuring to boost the fleet of the National Solid Waste Management Authority. Communities across the island have been complaining about a pileup of garbage which the NSWMA has blamed on not having enough trucks. Executive Director of the NSWMA, Audley Gordon, told the news that the new units will make a huge difference. They are cleared, they are being cleaned by the dealer as we speak, and they will be handed over next week, early next week. Once they are handed over, they will be in the community, and we will begin the process of trying to pay back some of the debt that we have incurred with the people. The truth is the 50 truck can't really solve our problems totally, but it will give us a good boost and we'll be able to push a little quicker through the communities more efficiently and we will be able to cut the complaint down significantly. Prime Minister pledges continued efforts to guarantee security and the safety after SOE expires. Friday's vote by opposition senators against an extension of the states of emergency declared in seven parishes across the island has sparked a strong exchange of words between members of the Jamaica Labour Party and the People's National Party. Both are blaming each other for the outcome and have remained firm in their positions. The proceedings in the Senate required the affirmative vote of one opposition senator for the extension of the measure. However, all opposition senators maintained their stance and voted against the extension. This means that the measure will come to an end on Tuesday, November 29. Prime Minister Andrew Holness reacted with disappointment at the failure of the extension attempt to make it past the Senate. He pledged, however, that the government will continue to use all available tools necessary to maintain the safety of the country. This was sharply rejected, however, by opposition Senator Damien Crawford. We're very disappointed that the opposition could not find it within themselves to support the saving of innocent lives, utilizing a tool that is constitutionally provided for. The government has the duty and the responsibility to keep Jamaican safe, and we will spare no measure, we will spare no effort to ensure that we keep Jamaicans safe and we spare Jamaican lives and we go after the criminals. Well, I'm saying they're ridiculous. The opposition has obfuscated the facts for a long time, ignored the statistics, and um, made, made cannon father of the ad advice 
of security professionals who have served this country for, in some cases for over 40 years and given up their best. You know, when you're sick, you go to a doctor. When you need legal advice, you go to a lawyer. But they've chosen to ignore the advice, which is informed by statistics, informed by on-the-ground intelligence, informed by the situation that they see. And the opposition has chosen to say that because of politics, they will not support the, the recommendations of the heads of the security forces. The senator is speaking along party lines. Um, his party is for the extension of the state of emergency. I'm sure having no other plan in place and no opinion of what's best to do, he might be a little bit um, experiencing some anxiety. So I can understand anxiety might cause that, that statement. The prime minister could always um, call another state of emergency if he's so convinced. But because it is a political ploy, I'm sure he will seek to blame the opposition for his um, inefficiencies and incompetence. Man held in major drug bust acquitted. A St. Mary man who was among four people held with a ganja worth more than $7 million has been freed of drug charges. Taxi operator Conroy Clark walked free from the Trelawney Parish Court on Friday after he was found not guilty of possession of dealing in and taking steps to export a ganja. Clark was reportedly driving a Toyota Voxy in Stewart Town, Trelawney in June 2020 with another man aboard when the vehicle was stopped by a police team said to be acting on information. A search of the vehicle revealed several bags of compressed ganja weighing about 1,700 pounds. Police investigators believe the ganja was destined for Haiti as part of the drugs for gun trade. Three other men, including a Haitian national, were arrested in two other vehicles that were traveling with the Voxy, the police reported at the time. Explaining the basis for the acquittal, Clark's attorney Donovan Collins told the news that his client maintained from the outset that he was only in the vehicle because of threats to his life. From day one, my client has said that he was only in that position because he was threatened with death by the other man in his vehicle, Collins said. The attorney said Clark believes justice has been served and is happy to have this cloud lifted from over his head. Over 100 rounds of ammunition seized in St. James Over 100 assorted rounds of ammunition were seized during a joint police-military operation at a new road flanker in St. James on Friday. The Jamaica Constabulary Forces Corporate Communications Unit said that the team carried out a search of premises in the area about 2.30 p.m. While searching a yard, two bottles, one containing 92 9mm rounds of ammunition and another containing 38.40 rounds of ammunition were found, it said. No one was arrested. However, CCU said the police are continuing their investigation. $500,000 reward offered for info on businessman's murder. Crime Stop is offering a $500,000 reward for information leading to the arrest and the charge of those involved in last month's murder of St. Andrew businessman Kamar Barrett. Barrett's body was found on Tamarind Avenue in St. Andrew on October 26 with a gunshot wound to the back of his head. The 38-year-old entrepreneur's car had been abandoned at a different location. According to Crime Stop, the police have been unable to find a motive for Barrett's murder and they need the public's assistance in solving the crime. Anyone with information is being asked to contact Crime Stop's toll-free anonymous tip line at 311. Barrett's death in late October said of a whirlwind of activity on social media as users expressed the shock at his death and paid glowing tribute to the businessman. He was a great and a sincere soul. He didn't deserve this. I pray that our leaders can build a safer Jamaica for all of us, one of his friends tweeted. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates.